Okay, and I'll go ahead and say, um, starting on March 21st, uh, we will start having classes on Sundays instead of Saturdays, um, just so that's on the record. And then you could probably start, it's about seven after now. I need a buzzer, I don't know if he's even listening to me. <laughs> okay, um, anyways, uh, just wanna thank everybody for showing up and uh, my daughter being administrator and got here running around going crazy, helping his dad with the mic and the camera and getting the camera set up for uh, a little later because I want to try to complete everything. So whoever's watching the class live here, I just uh, want you to see the complete uh, project when we're done tonight instead of ending, uh, you know, at Tulin and not getting the chance to show you the technique of how we're going to be done. And, um, tell you just a little bit. Um, first of all, thank my children and then uh, going into this uh, thing. I kind of pictured in my head about uh, a week ago. Um, I see it used a lot with people that do matting uh, around on a flat surface on their carving and in areas like that. And so it just, uh, it's kind of natural to me. And uh, to visualize how I could use that, put it into stamping and geometric stamping. So uh, it, it was pretty cool how it turned out. Uh, I'll probably get another one and do some grinding to it so it doesn't have such much, as much height to it. Um, so uh, a little less uh, excess effect that, you know, it's not necessary, but hey, I just had to get it. I was really excited. And so there again, I'm excited to show you how that works tonight. Um, so uh, I think uh, on that note, I uh, have a couple of stories to talk to you. I mean, people who watched last week's uh, video, we talked about uh, my previous business partner, and Brett's his name, of course, and uh, him and he had a really nice visit the other day, real nice chat, and so I'll be able to share that with you too, which was really uh really unique and fun we talked about memories and it was it was really cool so we'll talk about that later as i'm doing the work so uh i'm going to get into doing my tooling now all right all right so anyways uh what we're using here is some uh, 9, 10 ounce veg tan. Uh, I think everybody has a, a PDF file. I believe my daughter showed that to everybody. I think it's up there where you can look up where my supplier is. So you're using the same, same things that I'm using from the tools to the leather to the finish that put, is put on it. And that's the goal. I want your item to look just like mine, you know, because I want you to be very happy with the results and not disappointed in your results. So that's the goal here with me. Uh, and that's the reason I uh, volunteer my time to help because I want things to turn out positive, uh, not negative. Because when you put all this effort and time and spend the money on the tools, I just want, I want some really good results. I want happy uh, students and that's what it's all about. And uh, and just thinking of this, I'm really grateful uh, for Amanda. She's helping me and Garth. Uh, we are now up to, I think it's uh, 406 people in the class uh, site now. So uh, that's, I mean, that's been a lot. I think it's only been going on seven weeks or maybe the eighth week, but uh, it's really exciting to be able to know that uh, I'm able to help that many people. And now there's no charge for it. This is about helping someone to do something uh, when you're trapped in the house all the time, such as we are today. Uh, you know, it's better to stay busy and not uh, have issues. Let's just say that. So first of all, uh, good news is um, I did some research last week. We talked about, uh, I have a stainless border tool cutter and I checked into it. And I found it, uh, it's called the Little Wizard Border Tool uh, Cutter Tool that holds it. 
And uh, there we go. I'm not sure. How am I doing, Amanda? Is that good the position I'm holding at? Uh, yeah, that's good. Okay. So it's made of nylon. You have, you know, your adjustment screw here to keep tension and then this here. Okay. And, you know, it's been a while since I used one of these because of, you know, use mine for so long. When they make the little wizard border tool, they have a slot there behind that blade where it's put in. Okay. Um, they usually have a three eighths inch blade in there. I, uh, so if you want to take no, that's really not uh, hard to get um, control depth out of the blade. Uh, and that's the reason for that. Uh, okay, so next thing is being you go with a quarter inch uh, blade. Okay, so what happens is you have, you really have to be careful being that is notched out there. There's not much securing the blade. So you have to be really careful and hold that steady when you tighten it down so the blade can't tip and fall in that opening slot, which I've yet to this day figure out why that's done. So in earlier today, I used a filigree blade, quarter inch filigree blade, and it's just, it's too thin and uh, too flimsy and it wants to drop into that slot that they put right in there. So you wanna stay uh, on note, stay with a quarter inch regular angle blade. Uh, it's, you know, fairly thick there. And so that way, when you tighten that baby down, it stays right there in position. And that's the goal. You want to be in control of the tool. So I'll cut this right here. And so once you do that, okay, next to you. But um, I don't know. How is that? Can everybody see that all right? So yeah, that's you, good. Okay, you're basically going to put it in here and you draw it just like that. And the edge of that guide is up against the edge of your belt, a uh, holster rig, whatever it may be. And you just draw it down like that. And being it, it's not straight, it has a bevel out on the end, it helps spread things open a little bit. And uh, you'll see the next step, what's going to happen that... Um, it's just a lot of people don't know about this little technique and it's about making it easier for yourself and um, uh, save some wear and tear on your, your hand and wrist. So, okay, so what we have that is available at this time. I think that's in the notes, but I'm, I'll just say it to be safe. This is in stock right now at Springfield Leather. I think there's about 105 left. Uh, seriously, I'm... Uh, trying to help my students more and more find suppliers, what items they carry is good, what is bad. And that I try not to put out there uh, that I usually keep that in the file simply because I don't like to verbally make negative comments, you know, online. So anyways, once, once you, you cut, cut into the line and you make your groove, cut your groove line, we're now gonna wet that with warm water, not hot water, not cold water, but warm water. There again, hot water, it stretches it out and does harm as far as it gets distorted out of shape. And cold water, um, the pores are um, really tight. You have more resistance of um, doing the work, uh, makes it harder for yourself. So here's the next thing to uh, update you is, um, and these were really hard to find. Uh, th these are called uh, the bevelies. It's just like a beveler, it has a taper here. It's just a little bit here, nice and smooth here. And, uh, you know, I just try to do things that save time. Wrist. So, what we're going to do is you hold that just as if you have a beveler in your hand, except you're going to slide it back and forth, back and forth. And you'll put a smooth bevel line right down there and open that cut right up. So that's what I'm going to do next here. So just a matter of about three seconds, you can see what I just did. You know, you know, the camera can only be from one side. It's just uh, 
you'll get to see it when it's done here as I go. I'll try to show you as much as I can. How's the closeness on that, Amanda? Is that about right? Great. That's good. You could probably move it a little over towards the tools. Okay. There you go. All right. All right. I'm going to get both sides beveled here so we can keep on a roll. Yes, we run over a little bit. You know, I guess that's just the way it's going to be because I want everybody to see the, the finished results. So if you've uh, done any beveling, you have an idea that the amount of time that's involved into doing that. Hey, Doug. Yeah. Hey, um, aren't you kind of, in a sense, kind of burnishing that area by rubbing that back and forth? Uh, no, you're basically compressing it and you're smoothing that. Instead of having chalk marks out, you're uh, smoothing it out all in one. So now I've just beveled both sides of about 10 inches of leather, both sides. It's completely beveled. Okay. And the reason being is the next tool we use, okay, um, and there's a reason for that. Because now, now we're going to get into using the next tool as if we're holding a beveler. So I kind of have to add humor to that because I was just talking about uh, that. Uh, I guess if you rub fast enough, yeah, you're creating heat in that. But this is this is wet, and I'm just rubbing gently back and forth, kind of um, get that to compress and lay flat. And it's made a ridge. You can see the the ridge that's down in that baby. It's it's down there probably, I'd have to guess an eighth inch maybe, not, not quite an eighth, maybe a sixteenth. But, so here we go. So this is what I was picturing my head last week. And uh, there again, this is made by, back in the day, um, Hyde Crafters, the tool PA005, I think. My daughter has that posted for us. Uh, basically, like I say, a lot of people doing Western carving. They use that like as a matting tool, which is really cool. It, it's kind of neat, but we're going to use it in a different way, have a different look and do something uh, a lot of people don't do. And that's what I'm all about. So we'll get right into here. We're going to hold it just like a bevel. But what we've done here to make it easier for ourselves is now we have we have this. Try to cover this. This has a, a ledge or lip where it sets right down in there. We don't have to, oh, are we right on that line or not? No, it's going to drop right in there for us. And uh, we're going to be in control, not the tool. So we're going to go just like a beveler. And uh, so you don't have to go back and uh, make more work for yourself. Always overlap about half of the tool. Everybody see that all right? It's really cool how it looks when it's done. So. Instead of doing a full, you know, width apart and you end up uh, creating a, like a little lip or a raise there, you always want to hold it about half or a little more over the tool before. Tip at an angle, just like a beveler. Again, you know, you got to keep in mind, 50, this is my 51st year of doing it, so. It's, it's gonna look easy when I'm doing it. I'm just, when I did this, I'm going, oh my God. This is, this is you know, I was really excited about it. And I, I did a couple of them and I did a test run with another die technique, which uh, we'll be discussing that down the road because uh, I'm learning teaching myself even more advanced, uh, easier ways. So when class time comes for my students, um, it's going to make it easier and easier for you. So I didn't keep track, but you know, you kind of have an idea how long it took me to go down there. And now we created a, a ledge here. Okay. Um, I'm not sure uh, students tonight have seen any of my dye work, but if you watch the video, what we also just did here, and, and I'm always thinking ahead, you've now created a, a ridge down in here. So say when we have to do our dying out here, and we get, oops, it run over a little bit, it's gonna drop right down in here on us. It's not gonna travel up into here and make issues unless you, you really douse the dauber or your Q-tip or your rag. Cause I've showed you in all three 
aspects in my dying class using a dauber q-tip and a rag so uh, let's get down the other side here and there again don't you know try to hit it damn once because then it's real hard to come back and judge um getting a chop mark there i call it where it shows you overlapping she wanted as smooth as you can be you know so um but uh yeah there again this is really cool and as i was um thinking this tool through and you know what i've seen you know in my mind uh as i said before it's just something that I've been able to do since I was a little boy, 10 years old. <laughs> but uh, I could basically stare at the tool, tools, and uh, I could see what the design looks like before we start. So anyways, um, there we are. You know, has a, a beautiful look, pebbly, raised. Uh, I think what's going to happen down the road out here when we go to put that stain in, it's, it's going to look very impressive. So let's get right into the next step here. Still got some moisture, but I'm going to dampen it just slightly. Just like that. And I'm using, uh, I believe it's the saddle tool vayner, uh, the V755S, but I mean, you have the V413, 412, 417, they're pretty much the same distance, okay? And it has these little hoops in it, which is a big plus when you're gonna be doing this design. So you're gonna set it just about here and we'll get started just like that. I did that purposely because when you start off doing a belt, I'm gonna make this disappear when I fold it over and you'll get to see that. So that's the reason I did that tool like that for you. And there again, if you don't have darkness in your tooling, you're not gonna hold your finish. It's that simple. In other words, it's not gonna hold your antiquing and your stain. Um, that's, what, that's the point I'm saying. And one more here. Um, <laughs> and being with all these pebble marks in here, I learned, <laughs> um, modeling tool, you know, normally I'd take a modeling tool and push and make a mark on the other side. And, uh, I did that once or twice. And I said to myself, uh, ah, you're dreaming. So then I, I used, uh, one of these little silver pen, metallic gel pen. And so I opened it up. And like I, you know, taught uh, every third one come right across and I just put a tiny dot where I can see it come down three and then three. Okay, so now I got just, you can see it better there now. I'm gonna get, it was kind of wet here so it's hard to see this one. Okay, so. That'll be gone when you drop your veiner. I don't know if you can see those right here, down here, and then into here. So you connect on those dots, you connect two every single time. Okay, and as you'll see, once you do that, you get two on each dot. When you're done, you're going to see here that that lines up end to end and it touches both ends of each painter. That way your tooling is exactly across from the other side, which keeps your next tool straight. And then down here. 
that one, I prefer to tap that in the center at the top a little more like that. So now we got that into place. So now we, you know, you can imagine kind of what this will look like here. So now, last but not least, um, and, and here's where, you know, I wanted to point out to you folks, um, see, you get some shadow here because of the height of it right in here. And that's, you know, you really can't hold that at even a steeper angle without uh, the tool getting away from you. So I'm going to try to grind the top of that tool off. I got a couple more coming. Uh, and then that way I won't have these kind of issues up here. But uh, it's all about learning. All about learning. I mean, I'm really excited about how this will look. So there again, we're going to wet it just ever so lightly. Because we're already... Uh, this is going to be the last tool going down it right here. Okay. Um, and this is uh, going to be the very king. I think it's the number three, number three. Uh, so and that we're going to set that right in the middle, right here. Try to divide it up so it's equal, and you're going to hit it. And you got to hit it pretty good, as you can see. And there again, I'm all the way back in here, so I'm not have to use my arm a lot, and just and it sets it right in there, nice. Getting dry down there already from, I have a fan running. Keep myself uh, cool. So we're gonna wet that ever so lightly. Okay, so that baby's all done. How's that look, folks? Look pretty good. So now we'll get started on the belt. There again, when you wet this, you're going to want to wet it half approximately half the thickness. And um, whoever's new, uh, as you go to wet it, the further you get to the end, the heavier you want to wet it. And the reason being is, as you go to do your stamping slash tooling, the less you have to stop, pick up, stop, pick up to re-wet the leather. You can stand there and just continue to tool and tool and less time is downtime to do your work. And, you know, especially in my case where, you know, I'm doing, you know, multiples. So we're going to grab um, the bevelies. And there again, uh, don't quote me. I've talked with the owners, but uh, we're looking about Springfield leather. About three weeks, maybe three and a half weeks out, they're going to have this in stock. Uh, so you might want to write that on your calendar uh, so you get one. Let's just say that. Uh, they're very nice and they're, um, I think, three, four bucks, something like that. So um, let me get this bevel.
Okay, so there we have the one side all beveled for us. Better to have a little on the moist side than the dry side, because then it's a little harder to push, of course, and it doesn't want to move as easy. And uh, you don't want that because then it's working against you, not for you. And if you get it too wet, then it can slip out of position and then you've ruined your belt as well, or the edge of you know whatever you're going to be beveling. Okay, so now we have both sides beveled, and I'm sure you know that you don't have chop marks doing it this way. If that was hand beveling, you'd still be here about an hour, roughly, or close to that. So now we're going to re-wet, and we'll get started here doing the matting. So as you can see, the moisture here, and then it gets a little heavier down in there. Okay, does anybody have any questions before I start? I guess that's a no. As you can see, uh, the little finger is flush with the bottom of the tool. So as I hit it in, I'm feeling the depth that it's going into the leather at the same time. Dip it at an angle, of course. You don't get as much uh, pebbling look to the center, but most of all, you know, you pretty much do that anyways when you hold a bevel, when you do bevelling. So, any of you out there done any uh, some of your leather work this week, or belt, or wallet, or anything like that? I finished up a bunch of pancake knife sheaths today. Oh, cool! Get some carving or stamping, or just plain, or. Um, those I did in geometrics. Geometric? Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, like hand stitch on? When you assemble them? Say that again? I say, how'd you assemble them with uh, what? Like wax thread? Lacing? Um, just practicing on uh, my class 26. 
Oh, cool. cool. So are you doing that uh, with a groover or without a groover when you do your stitching? Um, I did it with a groover. Awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, just um, I think it makes the stitch sit a little better. Gives you a great way to see where that needle needs to go. Oh, absolutely. It makes it easier for yourself. Plus, it, it looks nice because the thread sets now, if not below, uh, more flush and not laying on top. Much, yep. much appearance, you know? Yes. Glad to hear that. That's cool. I'm working on some skillet handles right now, some plain, some geometric, and then some carving. Oh, cool combos, yeah. Yeah, uh, sure. I have a couple stories. I'll go ahead and share one, although it's kind of early for it. <laughs> but uh, uh, it was kind of brought back a lot of memories. The belt from last week that I uh, tooled it in class here, and then I finished it and posted pictures. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, was that Mary I'm speaking to. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So did you watch? week's video no i saw the pictures of the belt um on facebook that was the one with the little crosses on it yeah yeah i wanted to ask you about um about where to get that tool i guess i probably need to look amanda's probably posted the tool list for that but that was a really cool stamp yes it's really hard to get years ago they used to have it in an inspirational set you, you really gotta search around and find it i just i always you know collected tools and hung on tools and you know, as I'm sure you've seen my tool rack, of course. Um, but uh, I thought that was pretty cool where it would fit in in that. Uh, but Fred uh, was very inspirational to me. He gave me an opportunity years ago coming out of high school. I actually worked at Tandy Leather in Flint, Michigan. So you fear I was 17, 18. 18 years old, I think it was, out of high school. And I've been doing it since 10th grade. That's when I started doing it. And seventh grade, I'd go to little craft shows and elementary schools and you know, veteran halls and do stuff like that, you know? And then uh, I ended up getting hired in there. I'm thinking, wow, that's cool. Get to do something I love to do and just thought that was awesome, you know. So I started working there and learning that um, going into that, that um, it's hard to find someone with the experience to be a manager. So, you know, of course they take applications off the street. People have to go to uh, basically the bigger store of each state which at that time it was in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And they trained for six weeks and they show how to run a store. And so they really don't have virtually no experience coming into how to do it except that little bit over six weeks. And so, you know, I didn't realize, realize all that until of course I was into working there. And so, Long story short, I got to work there almost two years, you know, uh, join the investment program where you put in X amount of money every week and then they match you again. So uh, basically 20% of my gross was being put away. But anyways, so what was happening is because of being there about five or six months, people got to know me and uh, they then at that point, when they come in and say, okay, I'm looking at a piece of leather is dug here. And uh, yeah, uh, okay, I need to speak to him, you know? And so that continued to be the, the norm, which then of course called jealousy. 
And then, um, then when you uh, holidays come or year round, once you reached over a certain dollar amount every week, then uh, you would get 10%. What happened? Okay, it's back now. I think you just froze for a minute. Yep. What happened? It just froze up. The internet glitched. But you're going good now. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm not sure where we left off, but anyways. Uh, oh, okay. So yeah, you know, he was jealous and, you know, I wasn't meaning to be that way. It was about helping, you know? And I just happened to have basically eight years of working with leather coming into working for them. And people just came and asked questions to me because I have to know a little more. And so uh, then uh, season come around and year round, you, you got a percentage of your sales, the income, once you went over a certain dollar amount. And so I thought that was pretty neat. And plus I was able to help people. Well, it just, it made, you know, rough times between my boss and me, of course. And come holidays, you know, people wanted to buy extra things and all right. I don't know how long it took me, but I'm trying to watch the time clock here. We run over a little bit. I don't think that'd be much of a problem, would it? Huh? Not at uh, all. All right. Yeah, it's, it's very educational what I want to show you when this is done, but I want to show you this being tool completely because that way you get to see every step. And I'm trying to keep at a steady pace for us. But anyways, going back to what I was talking about is uh, I was able to help a lot of people in a lot of different ways. And uh, not only just in the store, but I had to go and go to hospitals and uh, they didn't let me go to prisons and do uh, demos. But I went to hospitals and schools and different scout uh, programs. And I teach them how to do it, uh, what tools they need, the belt strips, all that good stuff, and sell to them, you know. And there again, being he was the manager, they wanted him to stay in the store. And so, of course, <laughs> that didn't help me either. <laughs> so, anyways, um, but there again, it just, I, I loved what I did, and it seemed like, Everything always came natural to me. And I guess all I can say, I was blessed there because to look at a tool rack and see certain tools, um, and know what it looks like before you pick up the mallet or your hammer, uh, I can say I'm blessed. I guess I'm very fortunate. And the, the best thing I can say, I don't know, uh, maybe Garth can find a, a couple patterns. At one time, I was going to do a book. And by the time it got around uh, for printing, because all the words were done for it, all the tooling, all the dyeing, everything was ready to rock and roll to go to press. And the uh, name of the company was uh, Kelly Tool Company from Christtown, Christtown, New Zealand. And uh, what happened over there is the uh, uh, Mary, uh, anyways, they specified a lot towards our side, the geometric stamp. I was really excited and learned. And that's why I put forth the effort to try to build a book, make a book for them. And after about nine or 10 months of getting it ready for publishing, their government was right out of business. So it was pretty sad, pretty sad. Can you look up in that box down so you can see the difference between cutting and packing? No, tub down there. 
Oh, yeah. But anyways, what I want want you to see, um, you know, hopefully people that have to go back online and watch this, hopefully they can see and understand where people um, yeah. don't quite realize what it does when you mix, mix, saying a tool that packs the leather and one that cuts the leather, that does detail work, okay? There again, take in mind, this is 51 years of doing this. So, you know, it's all self-taught. But what I had to learn is when you combine those two together, you're not helping either other tool. It just, it just, it harms appearance. Yeah, just keep looking. So as you can see how far it went and didn't have to pick up uh, a towel. So now we're gonna wet it again. And as we get down to this end, you're gonna see I really wet it down. And there again, I said uh, the temperature, the water. So I'm lightening up on how I wet it. And you can kind of see here and we come down and it's getting really wet here. Uh, and that's the goal, so you can keep going. So anyways, uh, why my son is finding those two patterns uh, to, found huh? Found the bells. Oh, found the bells, as you can hear. <laughs> but anyways, um, what ended up happening is uh, because of my knowledge and my um, ability to sell, um, it became jealousy between the manager and me. Uh, he started uh, cutting my hours, hiring someone else. Um, it's just too bad because then Tandy Leather lost out. I actually was dealing with a production manager, uh, marketing, everything down there in Fort, Fort Worth, Texas, where, where corporate office is. So I knew, I knew these people very well because I was interested in investing in their company and putting forth effort to teach and help other people in the craft. Um, some people, I just share this with you. Um, some people understand this, some people don't, um, but I got a beginner set for Christmas. You got your swivel knife and your veiner, your pear shader, your camouflage, your cedar, uh, the backgrounder and the swivel knife, of course, and then your mallet, your hammer. And what I, what I learned, Mary, of course, and other people watching this is I looked at it, you know, it was really neat. It was a great kit, and I'll never forget that Christmas. But what I learned and taught myself was as I continued to do this and have a business, I looked at it. Okay, you go to kindergartner, and it's kind of like I'm the whole alphabet, and I want you to read it off to me, the whole alphabet. Not learn the first three or four, and then work up, you know. The, you know, it's like hand them the complete alphabet and have them learn it all at one time. And it just, it's too much. You know, so when you hand uh, a student seven tools, a swivel knife, and say, let's go at it. That's a big step. And so when I had my business, when I left Tandy Leather and had my own business, I said, I am not gonna do that. I'm gonna help them with a belt strip or a wristband. And we're gonna take one tool at a time. So they know how to hold it, how to hit it, and know how it works. And there again, I taught them, there's three different ways of hitting that tool because I teach them a wallet thickness, a midweight thickness, and then a heavy thickness such as this. So the one tool in itself, they had to learn how to hit it three different ways, three types of swings, real hard, a really light and gentle, and then like a medium hit. So you've taken one tool, you've taught them six, six or three different ways or strengths 
to teach them how to tool one uh, tool into leather, just changing your thickness. And, and that's a lot in itself. And until you do that, now they've learned how to use a camouflage safe tool or a vayner on say a wallet or a book binder or a belt. You know, it's just, I really thought it out when I done it because I wanted them not to be discouraged. I wanted them to be happy. And what I learned working at Tandy was you would see a lot of people want to give up. Oh, that's just too much. I just, uh, yeah, well, something else, you know. So I got to see firsthand what was happening. So it's very educational for me working it. I'm not tipping it like I should as I just caught myself. Too busy gapping my jaw. So did you get to meet some of the um, some of the big names, Jim Linnell, George Wentz? Um, probably the biggest one would be uh, George me. Hurst with George Hurst, probably. George Hurst. Because, yeah, he and, and me um, ended up being really close friends. Uh, it would have been 90, 91. Him and me were uh 1991 him and me uh were up for the al stoneman award in dallas texas you know and uh he uh won it and which is just fine really nice guy and he he did a lot of stamping too he did carving but he he tended to like more stamping too, kind of like Paul Burnett. Do you recall Paul Burnett over the years? I don't know if he, I think he's still around, maybe not. Tony Laird does a lot of stamping things too, right? Yeah, he had like a one on wallets, one on belts, and then I think he had one other uh, book. Okay, so now we have that all done. So how are we doing on time? <laughs> about 6.55. How many minutes am I in it? Right, six minutes, about 45 minutes-ish. 45 minutes to it? Yep. Okay. So, uh, hmm. 45 minutes into it. So maybe, yeah, I don't know how long you want to stay on here because I want people to be bored. How many people is up there? So anyways, um, being we demonstrated, uh, with the other, um, I'm really tempted to uh, stop there because we're saying we got 45 minutes into it, and there's probably another 25 minutes there. So maybe I should stop there, but I'm going to pull the belt up that I have done to a certain point, but I am going to demonstrate with this so everybody gets to see. Uh, the steps involved here. Let me grab this where we got some really good light. Okay, so here's here's what we got right now. How's the viewing on that? Does that need to be lifted up or? Yeah. Sure. 
Okay, so here's what I showed you before. How's that? Okay, and then we have this here. Looks really nice. So uh, what I've done here is the very edge, you uh, do that first with uh, cordovan, and you'd be using an applicator or a dauber, however you wanna call that. And as you can see, it was pretty good, I think. Um, for the most part, I think I did pretty good. I don't see any runoff. Sometimes it happens, of course. But anyways, um, then I what I did next is up into this area here, um, I believe it's uh, the acrylic finisher by Angelus because uh, I um, support them. And uh, we take that with a, this here is really tedious series. So I was using a, an angle brush. Uh, is that a brush over there? So I want to give you the correct number on that. I get most of my brushes from Hobby Lobby. The number on it and show. Yeah, it's a 10 dash zero angle. It's a 1500, but I'll show you in a minute. So then what I did is I then um, sealed the surface all around this, the upper part of it, just the surface on top. So what we're gonna do is this is gonna create uh, resistance with our antique. So we got a nice dark edge and then we're gonna come in with a little lighter brown here and then we're gonna go right to natural so we get a pop and we'll get like a three-tone uh, dye out of it, which uh, really looks nice because your natural kind of goes with anything. Then you're going to have our earth tone browns here and then the quart of an edge to kind of blend in and help the other two colors uh, pop. So uh, at least, you know, you can see here. And then I showed you here those steps. And here's where I'm at with this. Okay. So, well, is everything ready over there? Okay. Uh, we're going to take just a brief break because we've got to switch cameras, if you don't mind. Uh, 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, if that's good for everybody. Sounds good. Yeah, it works awesome. for me. All right. We'll see you in about 10 to get things up. Thank you.
Okay, I guess I'm back at it here, folks. Um, so we're going to start off, uh, as I say, in, uh, over at the tooling bench, we're going to dye um, this edge right here uh, with our um, cordovan, Phoebe's cordovan dye with, uh, you know, the wool dauber here. Is that a pro? Uh, no, that's a regular alcohol-based dye. Okay. Uh, the only uh, oil-based dye I use is the uh, Thebeans Black Oil dye. Okay. okay. And there again, uh, my memory, I am speaking with Mary, right? Yes. Okay. So from my years of doing it, uh, I'm watching the camera trying so everybody gets to see this. It's a little yellow. So Garth is getting a light for us here. And I'm just going to gently come in and touch the edge like that. But I prefer Mary and people watching, tip it at a slight angle. So if there's any extra flow, it's gonna come right to the edge. Is that better folks? Yeah, is there any way to zoom in a little bit closer? I'm not sure what you guys are working with right now. Not really, there's a camera hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. wasn't for sure. I went down the one side. I'll try to do it in more uh, timing here so we can see. Uh, and there again, we're going to go down the other side. Whoops, got in a hurry. There we go. Okay, as you can see, I kind of slipped in there. Hey, Doug. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that little mistake you said where you slipped, is that enough to to not give it or can you fix that or is that enough to have to redo it for a customer? Um that that's gonna be just fine. And the reason for that being um let's see, what's your name? Dale. 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 Yes. And the reason that's gonna work out all right is because because of the depth that I was teaching everybody to tool where there's darkness, uh the antique that we're gonna pour in. It's the last step on the belt. I just explained it's going to go down into those that deep impression in those little I'm going to call them pebbles, of course, because it's you know it's a matting tool. I don't know what else to say there. You know what I mean? Because I'm using this for stamping, but the antique is going to set down in here for us. So that's probably going to cover that right up. I'd actually have to get into um, boy, boy, I'm going to get this crushed. Um, you'd actually have to get into this area up here. To, okay. to have you, you okay. know, or, or clear up here at the top of that where you see more whiteness, then you might have an issue. But as as we all know, you get in a hurry, you'll mess up every time. <laughs> Learn that from grandpa. Okay, so um, when we were at break time there, my son was getting things set up, which I appreciate that very much, Garth. Um, uh, what I had taught my years and years ago, probably 35, 40 years ago, is uh, you, you never mix a tool that cuts and does detail or with it that actually packs and makes the design. They're totally, totally the opposite, you know, so uh, you definitely don't want to do that. So let me show you this. Um, th these were all Kelly tools. As I was making the design before 
for my book to be uh, made. Let's see if I'm tipping that all right. But you can see every tool in that is making a nice detailed cut for us. That's beautiful. Okay. And there again, what I did with this, um, this, um, <laughs> Because, you know, this is kind of advanced stuff here. Um, and I want to work on that down the road. But what I did, this was some speed dyeing I did here. Uh, but the edge was done black. Uh, this whole surface here in the center you're seeing, that was actually sealed off where it was natural. And what I did is I took Phoebe's tan dye at that time. And I went down over the top to tone the base sealer down or the number 600 Angeles base sealer. And uh, I had a, it's approximately 11 seconds to work with, with that because the lighter the color, the less pigment is in the color. And the more pigment that's in the color, the quicker it can eat through and penetrate the number 600 acrylic fish, finisher. So that's why it has more of a yellowish cast is because of that technique. So let's go to this now. This is the same die, but these tools are ones that pack the leather. They don't cut the leather. They pack the leather like a pear shader would. See the difference in that? And when you combine those two, a tool that packs it versus the one that's cutting and giving detail, there we go. It just, it simply does not work. I mean, as far as my opinion in 51 years now, uh, every time I tend to combine those two different types of tools, a tool that's gonna pack and one that's gonna cut and give you detail, it just does not pull it together. It does not make it look nice. Let's just say that. But that's Doug Monroe's opinion of 51 years of doing the work too. So. I, uh, I'm thinking you can all see that and understand why, you know? So uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll get at putting the acrylic finisher now, uh, the number 600. Okay, um, I got an old bottle here. But uh, now that I got a, a little bit of time, I have time to share, you know, uh, an interesting story. We were talking about uh, Fred, the gentleman that helped me get started in the business and that. And uh, that was after I left Tandy, of course. Um, so what happened is in 1982 to 1986, I was in business with Fred Mallard. Um, so um, too bad we didn't up on the table here. But what I'm gonna do, I mean, I showed you in the other one, but I'm still gonna show you again, this area, all the smooth upper area that doesn't have tooling is gonna be sealed off and kept natural. So that's what I'm doing at the time. I'll try to stay and view a camera here. Um, and what you wanna do, I'm gonna show you with this particular design, the easiest way to put the sealer down, you start at the top. Let's see if you can see that. Yeah, the moisture there. Okay, so I started at the top here and I swipe down up into the top there. And then I'll do that on both sides and then fill in a little bit in the middle. And that takes a minimum of two coats to do that. And sometimes it's just real wise to do a real light coat uh, for a third one to get a, a nice sealed surface there for us. Can you show us that Angelus product again, the label of that bottle close to the camera? That doesn't have the right one. Oh, okay. I, well, he's gonna get the jug because this is a real old one. This, let's say this is about 30 years old. Uh, I'll have Garth grab uh, the bottle there for me. It's that gallon jug. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to, it's uh, number 600, and, and there again, um, Mary, I don't know how, if you got into the PDF file, you know, I guess everybody on YouTube, they're going to hear this anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and say it, um, it's about helping people, but anyways, Paul, Paul, I've known him like 40 years, 
very nice gentleman. Uh, and what he does, you know, I've got all these different companies that are working with me and just, they're really happy for what I'm doing. And what, what they're doing is you, um, when you go onto my file that you have access to, there's going to be a code for uh, Paul, you know, Angela Shoe Polish Company. There's going to be a code you use through my company, and you're going to get a discount from Paul at Angela Shoe Polish Company. So, yeah, you can buy these finishes elsewhere, okay? But if you want to save a little money, uh, I would suggest calling them yourself, tell them how you found out about, about you know them because you're taking classes with me because that's uh, good for them to know that of course not that I get paid anything I'm just simply doing this to, to help people that need some uh, knowledge in uh, doing the leather work uh, it just it was a burden on my heart back in November and I just followed through and you know I, I thank God for the talent and most of all that my children are here with me helping me and guiding me and uh, and being part of this ministry so uh, that's the cool part about it. So there again, I put two coats on that, but I'm gonna get, get to a brief story here. It's kind of fun. In other words, to, to get your name known and get out there, you uh, set up different programs with you know, your scouts, hospitals, prisons, rehabilitation centers, you know, your um, youth groups, uh, the hospitals, of course you have drug and rehab, then you have occupational therapy where they have to learn head and eye coordination. So when I uh, took Fred Mallard for the first time because of years of doing it, um, we had went out to a school um, probably 25 minutes away. I guess it doesn't hurt to say the town. as in um, Mount Morris uh, and the business in Flint, of course. And so what, what had happened is we went there and it was Fred, he had his son with me and, you know, and uh, Fred was kind of like a mentor, but I was a mentor to his son, Glenn, because uh, he, uh, he was part of uh, having help from his dad and his dad wanted him to be part of this. But anyways, we went there and done uh, a demonstration to some young children in Scouts, Cub Scouts, it was about 25, 30 children. And they got to make a bracelet in that and uh as as we left uh it's like two hours later because it takes a while to go through and show them the different skins i taught them in that and uh so anyways uh, we're on our way back um to flint from mount morris and we're traveling down the road it's dark out of course you know and uh we're traveling down the road and first of all we didn't know there was a a cop or a law enforcement officer following us. We didn't know that, of course. And so then the other thing is further behind the cop, which probably the cop didn't know it, he might have, but there was a wrecker also. Okay. And uh, what was funny but not funny is here we're traveling down the road, coming back to Flint from Mount Morris from doing this demonstration for the children. And this big deer runs out in front of us out of a cornfield. He was like a, a 10 point, you know, probably, you know, around 200 pounds roughly. He was probably three, four years old. And anyways, that when that deer jumped, he land square in front of that pickup truck, our pickup truck of uh, Fred Mallard's. And uh, <laughs> let me tell you, it was uh, quite an experience to have the impact of that thing hit and the seat belts tighten. But um, anyways, uh, here this cop had been following us and um, here this deer runs out in front of us and uh, here the cop is right there. He flips his lights on <laughs> and then within, you know, two minutes, you see this record coming up and says, hey, do you need any help? I mean, what's, what's the odds of that happening? Uh, when you have an accident or something like that happen. It was uh, quite a, an ex experience and going, dang, what's the odds of that? You know, when he asked us if we want the deer or not. And of course we, we did, and we threw it in the back of the pickup, but uh, we also needed Rucker. It took care of the whole front end of his pickup. But uh, 
the belt I did online last week, Mary, that uh, you'll see when I tooled in that. Um, I'm gonna do one more coat on this. So it seals it up nice. And so uh, I had a chat with him and uh, about the belt and he got it all right. And he brought that up and was talking about it and he was chuckling and laughing, had a good old time. And take in mind, he's 89 years old and we just had a real nice visit, really enjoyed ourselves. And he was telling me that story and we both kind of got a good chuckle out of it as well. You know, a lot of memories, good memories there. Because uh, from 82 to 86 is when he helped me get my start uh, having a full-time leather business. But there again, I still go back. And I'm very grateful for my mother and father get me a little set for Christmas as well. They're just as much a part of this. So anyways, you can see how the second coat here, um, you can see it kind of puddling just to the top. Can everybody see that all right? Yes. Okay. So then you know it's it's sealed up pretty darn good. When it's setting on top like that. And uh, just just so you know, Mary and all, everybody else watching, um, and and I see I see this this week. Um, I don't say a name. He was doing, I think. Um, a case, if I recall. And uh, there again, take in mind, this is 50 years of doing this. So no, I don't know everything, but I know results from experience. And uh, V-Beans has a great dye uh, when it comes to their dyes. And then I messed up there for you, Mary. Let me tell you something. Uh, when it comes to oil dyes with, uh, you know, your V-Beans, black is a, a very nice uh, color, but when you get into oil base, there are other colors of leather dye. Okay, let's say tan or that. We'll let that dry now. That's it's all been sealed uh, twice, so we're gonna let that dry, and we're gonna go on to the belt here. I'm gonna give this uh, brush to my son, and here we go, Mary. Uh, this is uh, what I'm using by uh, Angela Shoe Polish Company. Number uh, 600. Thank you. Yeah, and there's a complete list uh, in the file there for you uh, to help you with everything that I use here. Yes, Amanda posted it in the chat. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Amanda. Oh, so now we'll go back. And, and what we have here is, um, as I was saying there, Mary, when we we'll deal with other fee beans, oil-based dye, okay, after you put it down and you go to clean it uh, and you go to, you know, say you're going to bend it to make a nice sheath where that fold is there, that, that dye is going to lighten right up. Right where that fold is, it's, it's going to lighten right up. Say, let's take this piece of leather here. We're going to fold that just like that. And this area right here, you're yeah. going to see the dye will lighten right here. The oil dye will. You betcha. The oil dye will do that every single time. Okay. And that, it just, it's the norm. It's the norm, of course, and black doesn't. Uh, and that's why I stay with Fee Beans, their alcohol-based dye. Okay. And when you come back and clean it with the Carnuba cream, which is on the list, Carnuba is a natural oil. You're going to get the excess off using your sheepskin. And you're softening the leather back up what you took away when you use the regular dye is alcohol based. So you're pulling oil from the cowhide, but yet it's going in and penetrating. So when you come back with Carnuba, being a natural oil, you're cleaning the surface and you're applying the natural oil back down into the leather itself, which that's what keeps it flexible and pliable. If you don't do that and you bend it over, yeah, you're gonna crack the grain of the leather right open. And yeah. that's simply, you know, Right where this is, you crack that, of course. Right. Yeah, that that has happened to me. Right, right, and so that that's the technique you use there, on that. Um, so, um, the uh, the cord of the antique that has the number on it, and uh, let me grab my bottle here for my antique.
this is really messy. It's kind of like a mustard jar, of course. But uh, here's what we're using. There we go. Okay. And that's what I'm going to be applying next. Okay. So um, before I forget, okay, what we're talking about, the reason I use only Angelus Antique, okay, it's because it's an acrylic base. It still penetrates. It goes in. But you are in control of the finish. It is not. Okay. And what it is is your Phoebe's Antique still has all the alcohol in the antique. And when it that's what it is, the antique is going to be in control. You're not going to be in control. So you're going to have blotches, streaks, and stuff of that nature. Okay. I just want to make sure does everybody hear me all right on that? Because that's really, really crucial what I'm about to say. You want to explain them what you're about to do because so anyways on that guy's uh, case he was making what happened is um when he, he put it on one piece he went ahead and put it on the other and so the second piece was already getting set up and by the time he got it off the first piece it was drying around the edge of his other piece but being the Phoebe's antique has all the alcohol in it it was creating blotches and streaks into his piece of leather, okay? So there again, Angelus isn't gonna do that. You're in control, Phoebe's isn't because the alcohol that's in it. It, it just, you're not gonna win. So anyways, let's, let's get into this so you get to see the beauty of this. Um, let me grab my brush here. So here's what we're gonna do one more time before we start here. This has been a uh, cordovan Phoebe's alcohol-based dye out on the edge. Uh, Angelus acrylic finisher here in the center, 600, I think it was. And now we're gonna apply the antique over the whole thing, over the whole thing. And that, of course, is gonna go down into all the cuts, the depth of the impression. And we're gonna uh, enhance this pebbly look here, which I'm really excited to see because I haven't done this part with this and I just, I could see it in my head, but uh, let's back up uh, in case no one, um, I didn't cover this in the stamping time. If you don't have depth down in the cut and the impression, like even down into this group of this diamond here, it's not gonna hold the antique. And so when I go to wipe with this rag, the rag would pull the excess out of there and you would lose the effect of having an antique look where you have a contrast. So always, no matter what, like you see me a lot of times, I went back and hit the veiner twice, tap it into the back so it stayed dark. Because if I don't do that, when I go to do the next step and I swipe with the rag, I'm gonna pull it right out of my work and you just wasted your time. So uh, too bad our camera wasn't closer. We're, we're working on all these things. So this is new to us. The goal is, is helping you folks. So I'm gonna shake up uh, the Angelus Antique. And there again, uh, those rags that, um, let me show you that, I think. Did I show you folks that? Here, here's what I'm using. You get them at uh, Lowe's um, and it's all t-shirts, so which is really cool. So it's nice, smooth and slick and uh, works really nice. And uh, Dang, I think there's seven, no, four pounds, and that's like 15 bucks. It'll last you for a long time. So, okay, so uh, what we're going to do now is, as you can see, we have a nice, smooth, uh, flat rake here. But there's another thing that we have to keep in mind. <clears throat> so it glides for us and, and goes across this surface really quick. I'm going to purposely put some on the table here, just uh, probably a quarter size. I'm gonna take the rag and blot it in it, spin it around. And now, as you see here, this is really slick, it's really smooth, and that's what we want. So when I come down this belt, it's gonna glide and not grab and drag on the, the veg tan leather that doesn't have dye onto it. So here we go.
and there again, you know, that would have been an outline right there if that was Phoebe's die, right where that was set. Okay, so now we're going to take this and we're going to carefully rub it in, get it down in all those cracks and crevices really nice. You know, it's got some beautiful depth. I think this is, this is going to turn out sweet for us. Okay, I think I got it pretty good. And you can put it on a little on the heavy side because that way it glides. And uh, by the time you get it rubbed in, you want that right to just swipe right on down that baby. So there again, I'm gonna go right up on that end where it's nice and wet right here. And I'm gonna moisten this rag a little bit again. And here we go. All right. That looks great, Doug. Okay, so of course that's gonna have to dry uh, three or four hours and then we clean the surface with uh, carnauba cream with a flat smooth rag. And I will post that later so everybody gets to see that. Um, but uh, I have to show you something here. We're just about ready to wrap up. Uh, are we having any questions right now? Doug, you, as you got it on the paper there, kind of some of the stuff got over the edge. Um, uh -huh. Were you concerned about it getting on the back of your belt? And I guess that begs the question, how uh, and what do you do to the back of your belt? Absolutely, I'll show you that. And, and there again, what I would have done, because I'm watching the clock with my son, I'm gonna just, just for grins, I'm gonna grab it and just, I'm barely got any pressure. I'm, I'm picking up any excess that's on the edge. Okay, so we got that cleaned off the edge. This is gonna have to set. And uh, we got some on the back here, as we can see. Okay, and so uh, there again, we need to get uh, feet, uh, Angela's, um, yeah. And there again, <clears throat> Paul there at Angeles, he has just, you know, awesome, awesome relationship with him as far as what he does. So what we're gonna do uh, later, being this was uh, dark brown, this is what you're gonna wanna get. <clears throat> See, that is what? 660, that's a 660 Angeles dark brown edge. And it's used for the back as well. So uh, there again, I uh, purposely put it on a little bit heavy. So all my edges are already covered for me in the first place. Okay. And so what you do after um, this dries, not when you clean it, after, after your belt dries here, you're then going to flip it over on the back side. You're going to take a wool dauber and you're going to apply this stuff right here. And what that does, when that dries, it's permanent. And what happens, you have a nice, this is done in black here. You see how nice that is on the back? The oh, yeah, that, that looks really nice. And it won't crack? Nope, nope. Okay, so now you put that on the back, and that's permanent. So when people sweat or perspire, you know, that's not going to matter. It's never going to bleed, nothing like that, you know? Huh? I said I can testify to that. And he can testify. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking maybe you should take um take a picture of one that has been worn for a while. Yeah. Yes. And show it. Right. So now, do you put that do you put that on the edge too? Uh yeah, for some reason I I miss I miss it, you know. Then I'll take that and put it on the edge as well. Okay. And uh let's just cover the whole thing being we're talking, let's follow this method all the way through being we're on live. Uh so what we would do next is we've done the back with our, uh, was that 600 T? Amanda knows that, of course. 660. 
the 660, the edge coat, you put it on the back and touch up the edges where it is. Once it dries, you flip it over. Now, this here is probably totally dry at this point, okay? So, um, grab the kind of the cream. Hang on, I'm just moving down into the table to grab a rag force here. I got to show you this belt because I'm really excited about a belt I did earlier. And take in mind when you work with it every day, V Beans has the best carnauba. It's really messy, as you see. I use it in the gallon. Oh, okay, here's 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 a cleaner one my son got. <laughs> okay, so and what you do is you put that. And I use this so I don't ruin a rag. But here's what I did. I took another piece of rag and I poured probably hand sized area with of uh, carnauba on it. And I just fold it up and I work it through so it's without the whole surface with that on it. And then just as if you're going to dust something, you lay that down, wrap it around your hand, say two layers like that. So it's nice, smooth, and flat for you. And then you're going to lay it right on top and dust dust the surface and you'll pick up any antique that's laying on the surface of your belt or your piece of leather and that's what needs to be taken off because everything else is down into your cut down into the impression and it's dried in there it's not going anywhere so by using the rag you're only cleaning the excess cordovan the excess antique that's laying on top here and over your 600 acrylic finisher. And when you're done, this is what it looks like. It looks just like that. So is Carnuba also your sealer, your final top coat also, or just the cleaner? Uh, that's, that's really choice. Uh, what I usually do after uh, the Carnuba is put on and clean, and then this has been buffed with sheepskin, long hair, chrome tan, uh, sheepskin. Um, it's probably right under those rags there. Yep, that would. This right here um, is what you use, and there should be the box with the veg tan in it too. But anyways, being as uh, chrome tan, it's very flexible, it's very pliable. So you're just you're creating air, uh, folks. You go really fast, really light. You're just dusted, but go really flat fast. And it creates air current and. The carnauba is kind of dull when it dries, and then this is what buffs it and give it luster, okay? But what I did to this, Mary, is I then went a step further. I went back with the Angelus number 600 acrylic finisher and used, used a flat rag and just dusted over that real lightly. I let it dry, and then I came back and grabbed my sheepskin again and went really fast. And there's your, there's your facts right there. And then that thing is flexible, it's pliable. Okay. So, uh, and then, so you see the difference. And this, this is when you're doing a plain color folks, this here has been tan, veg tan. Okay. Just like our piece of tooling leather and they tan it this way for like horses, it goes underneath the back of a saddle, being it's natural oils when they, when they tan it with veg tan leather. So it doesn't harm the horse being under the saddle, but the hair is more coarse. It's not real flat and flimsy. So it cleans and scrubs and just does an awesome job when you're doing a, a plain color, like something that's all black, all brown, all tan, etc. Okay, and... Um, Let's see, where, what was I going to get them? Oh, now getting excited, starting to forget. But no, I haven't forgot. I got to show you something because uh, this is something down the road. This would be something down the road that we'll do. It's very advanced. So I don't like to bog people down, uh, get them depressed because it's something that you, you, you've got to have some years under your belt to do it. And so let me grab this. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, so um, what do you folks think of this, Harry? And what, Dale, how do you like that, Dale? Does that look nice? Yeah, it does. I like that. That's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share, share the, the technique that I did here, but please, you know, simply practice on wristband size. It, it's something that um, you don't, you know, I don't want you to ruin a project is what it boils down to. Okay. And if you notice what I, what I did here, because I, I wanted to give it some sparkle and like luster, you know, so get up on my shoulder here, make sure everybody can see this. See how just the surface of this over here, it ah. kind of is and sparkles right up here for us. Okay. It's all smooth here, but we just catch those high points there, Dale and Mary, um, where those stuck up, you know? And what that is- You're uh, catching it this, with what, like a metallic paint? Yeah, in fact, I'm gonna show you. And, and there again, uh, this is, it was kind of different how you do it is, this, this is the first thing you use, right? Anyways, it's folk art. Cop, cop uh, 664 is the code on it. Copper 664. Yeah, no, it was great. It was literally like on the bottom. Got that all right? If you want to write notes. I have some. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, it, it can, it really sets up quick. So what, what I try to do is, if you recall, I took my antique here, remember this? Yeah. I put them down, I put them down to my tabletop and then I went like this and rubbed it around. So do that first with your rag. Okay, so it's kind of moist and slick for us. And then you would take this and squirt it right down over top over here, just slightly, excuse me, back up. I do backed up. So what you do <laughs> is you're gonna you're gonna make a puddle of this on your on your tabletop. Like right here, you can see a little bit here. But anyways, seriously, you make a puddle like this size, but it spreads out and goes a long ways. I can probably do four or five more belts with that little bit. So basically you're gonna put that on your rag and make that even more slick where there's excess and you're gonna swipe right over the top of that. And so your whole surface will be this copper, right copper? Yeah. So we're swiping the top with uh, the copper bronze, uh, yeah, copper folk art, okay? So you gotta have you know a decent amount on there so it, so it gets down into this tool here, this, um, Whatever we call that, because that's a new tool. I'm so used to it, kind of excited about it. But anyways, so it will get on here for us too, say, to get so a copper. You're, you're getting that copper on the highlights or, or down yeah. into the, into the group? Pretty much, just exactly what you said, Mary. We're getting a surface and then up here's your highlights here. Okay. So and then this gets dark down here because the antique we just uh, put in and the other one is down into here. It's down into all these cuts and impressions. Um, so yeah, it's just barely touching the surface here. And as you can see, I mean, it really turned out sweet. I'm really happy with the results with that. But what happens is that can penetrate and go in so quick, it can dry on you. You then have to come back with a, a rag, clean rag and use denatured alcohol, which is your, your cheapest, like at Lowe's, uh, Home Depot. And you're gonna take it, wrap it around your finger, and you're gonna scrub. Mostly you're just gonna scrub the edge here, get all that excess off and you have to do that. So when you put your black down over here, it can go down into the pores and stay into the leather. So that's that's where your extra time is, is you're gonna to have to come back with a rag and just scrub and scrub and get that excess copper off. And uh, so it opens the pores back up because you sealed it when you put the copper down. So you gotta get that clean back off with uh, alcohol denatured alcohol. So now you've opened the pores up and then you're gonna take your applicator, come back and dye right over that black. And uh, that's, I mean, then there's steps with Carnuba and Boffin and then you can put the acrylic finish over it. And, and that's exactly what I did to get the, to get the look. 
Very cool. So you're doing that copper as the first step before before you did any of these colors. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So anyways, um, I think that I think that covers everything. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Nope. Cool, cool. Then I said I taught it right tonight, right? <laughs> <laughs> you did a nice job. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it's beautiful. Fun. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, we'll just continue. Uh, we're going to we're gonna do some specially dyeing here in two or three weeks. I think my daughter's got that posted up there. Uh, it's something that, uh, you know, it saves buying uh, an airbrush that can cost you hundreds of dollars. I'm going to teach you how to do that technique without spending those amount of money, you know, that amount of money, which is crazy. So uh, anyways, I guess we'll call that it for the night. And uh, uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the class and uh, you have a great rest of the weekend. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I, I